So this is going to be the section on peripheral vascular disease. All right, so just kind of an overview. Uh, we have arteriosclerosis, which is a thickening of the blood vessels. Um, and they, the arterial walls have a decreased elasticity. And there's a hardening of the arterial walls. So thickening, decreased elasticity, and a hardening of the arterial walls. Atherosclerosis um, is where deposits obstruct or harden the arteries. So it's more of your plaque or um, different things that can be deposited within the um, inside the arteries. So arteriosclerosis deals more with the outside, the actual structure of the arteries. Um, and then atherosclerosis deals with things that build up on the inside. Um, chronic venous insufficiency, which is abbreviated CVI, deals with inadequate venous return, um, deals with vein or uh, valve blockage. So you have blood pools in the lower extremities, which leads to stasis um, and then can lead to ulcers and uh, various problems. computer is doing something really odd right at the moment. Okay, I'll keep going. Alright, so um, <coughs> chronic venous insufficiency. Like I said, you have that blood that collects um, and stagnates, which is um, called venous stasis. Um, you have increased pressure that impairs the arterial circulation as well. This leads to not enough oxygen and nutrients uh, getting into that area, which then leads to cell death. Uh, when you start to see that breakdown of the red blood cells, this is when you'll notice the uh, brown uh, skin pig pigmentation. Um, so if you've ever been around patients who, you know, it's usually about mid-calf and lower, um, their skin is very brown. And so you see it more in Caucasians than uh, anybody else. Um, but it's a very, it's a definite change in the coloration of their uh, lower extremities. Um, and that's why so you've got that stagnation of blood uh, in the lower extremities from venous insufficiency uh, so the cells in that area are not getting enough oxygen and nutrients. Um, the cells start to die and then you have the breakdown of those re red blood cells which leads to the color change. Venous stasis ulcer, um, very difficult to treat uh, because we're not getting enough blood to that area um, which is what is needed to bring nutrients um, to heal wounds. Um, things that can cause it, uh, smoking, hypertension, high cholesterol, uh, diabetes, a positive family history, um, people who are overweight are more prone to develop uh, peripheral vascular disease, physical inactivity, um, and then those who are over the age of 50 are also at risk. Um, people who have uh, jobs where they have long periods of standing um, or even long periods of sitting uh, can, uh, are more prone to develop uh, venous insufficiency. So what does it look like in a patient? Uh, a lot of pain. Um, is what the biggest complaint. You have intermittent claudication where they have cramping or aching within the calves and thigh um, area as well as it can even go as high as the, um, the buttocks um, and it gets worse with activity um, but as soon as they stop to rest then it's relieved. Um, rest pain is when uh, they have the burning um, sensation or they feel cold and numb in their extremities um, and they're not doing anything and that discomfort increases when the legs are elevated and decreases when the legs are dependent. Um, they also can experience decreased sensation and muscle atrophy. Um, and then you can see other signs and symptoms here. They have decreased peripheral pulses. Uh, the skin is very shiny um, and hairless and like I said earlier with that breakdown of the red blood cells can become discolored. Um, it can also become a very dark red called dependent ruber. Um, which is when they're allowed to stay in that dependent position and become that dark red color. Uh, their toenails become very thick. And complications are that if it, um, they get ulcers or they have problems that um, are not treated, um, that can develop gangrene, which then leads to um, amputation. They are also more prone to getting um, infections, uh, which can lead to uh, sepsis. Um, our main focus for, for treatment for these patients are to relieve their symptoms. Uh, we're also going to promote adequate circulation to these tissues. Um, and we're going to try uh, healing and preventing tissue damage. Uh, you've probably heard of or even used UNO boots. 
um, in, in your facilities. Uh, and that is a treatment um, that we can use to treat some of those weeping um, stasis ulcers. Segmental pressure measurements check pressures uh, within the upper and lower extremities. Um, and then in peripheral vascular disease, uh, we check the lower, we expect it to be lower in the legs uh, than in the arms. So when I say check pressures, it's just that. We're checking blood pressures in the arms, um, and then we'll compare it to uh, pressures within the legs. So if this patient has uh, peripheral vascular disease, we're going to expect to see uh, the pressures uh, give have a lower reading in the legs than it does in the arms. Um, we can do uh, stress testing. Um, and we'll uh, then check um, to see what their blood pressure is in their ankles following that stress test. Uh, we can also do ultrasounds, uh, looking for blood flow uh, within the extremities as well as to see if there's any signs of obstruction. Duplex uh, Doppler ultrasound is looking at arterial and venous abnormalities. Um, <coughs> Your uh, transcutaneous oximetry is looking for oxygenation of the tissues. Um, it's not uncommon that if we're having a hard time getting uh, pulse ox readings on a patient's finger, we can even use their toes. Um, so they should, you know, if they have adequate blood flow, um, should have the exact same reading um, in their toes as they would in their fingers. Um, MRIs can go in and look at the arterial flow and look to see if there's any obstructions there as well. As far as drugs that we can give, aspirin and Plavix or uh, clopidogrel, clopidogrel, I don't, yeah, it's not, it's not the night, it's Plavix. Both of those inhibit platelet aggregation, uh, which is the ability of those platelets to clump together. Um, so both of these would go in and prevent platelets from clumping together to form clots. <coughs> Sulostazol is a platelet inhibitor as well as a vasodilator. It increases blood flow and helps to improve uh, claudication. Um, and then the last one, uh, its uh, trade name is Trintel, T-R-E-N-T-A-L. Uh, it decreases the blood's viscosity. Um, it increases red blood cells, which then in turn helps to increase blood flow. So what can we do that doesn't require drugs? We can get them to stop smoking. Uh, very good foot care, making sure they're really watching making sure that they're not getting any types of sores. Um, they should be having progressive strenuous exercise, so 30 to 45 minutes of walking. And when they um, start to have leg pain, then they should sit down and rest. And as soon as the leg pain goes away, they should get back up and uh, continue walking. Um, nicotine, the reason we tell them to stop smoking is that nicotine promotes um, atherosclerosis. It causes vasospasms, which decreases the blood flow to the extremities. Um, <clears throat> I think what else? Um, those are the biggest things. Uh, surgery. We can go in and try to open up these um, areas and try to get blood flow going back. Um, we can do um, angioplasty. is no longer just for the coronary arteries. Um, so any artery that is blocked, we can try to open that up. Um, and then we want to place stents uh, when we can to keep that artery open. Um, atherectomy, we can go in and remove clots or break up clots using lasers. Um, in the arterectomy, we can go in and remove uh, plaque that has built up, so your carotid endarterectomies. Um, and then bypass grafts, we can do something, femoral uh, popliteal bypass grafts or fem pops um, are very, very common where they go in and they bypass where that blockage is so they can improve blood flow um, to that lower extremity. Um, these are some complementary alternative therapies um, that we can uh, look at as well. Education. Um, <clears throat> education, especially for those um, with peripheral vascular disease, is to um, educate and support them through this process. Um, but prior to um, them actually developing it, we want to focus on preventing. Uh, so we're going to focus on getting people to stop smoking, and they'll start smoking education as you know, early as elementary and middle school. Uh, focus on dietary changes, uh, regular exercise, and screening. Uh, but then once the peripheral vascular disease has occurred, that's when we'll go uh, to this uh, slide and educate those who have it um, to elevate their legs whenever they're resting or sleeping, um, to walk um, frequently, 
um, to avoid sitting or standing for prolonged periods of time. Don't cross their legs, which will block off blood flow even more. Um, avoid tight-fitting garments. Um, elastic hose as prescribed. Um, when we're talking about elastic hose, we're talking about like the TED stockings and making sure that they get the pr appropriate size, um, that we're not buying ones, especially to have good compression over the feet and ankles. Um, we don't want it so tight once it gets up to the uh, knee area um, that it's cutting into uh, the circulation behind the knee. Um, and then making sure they're doing very good foot care. Um, so as far as their history, uh, making sure that we're assessing any complaints of pain that they have um, and evaluating when and where that pain occurs. Um, and then our physical exam, once again, comparing peripheral pulses. Um, and especially when we get to those lower extremities, making sure that we're not saying um, that the pulses are just absent. Um, just because we can't feel them doesn't mean that there's not some blood flow still coming uh, to that area. So if we can't palpate them, then we want to go get the Doppler um, and Doppler to see where those pulses are. Um, and then if you're really nice, you'll have a Sharpie in your pocket and you'll pull that Sharpie out and mark on the foot exactly where you heard it the best so that the person coming in after you doesn't have to go back through that whole process of trying to figure out where that pulse is. And then looking for any areas of discoloration in the skin. Uh, which, like I said earlier, is a definite sign um, that there is a problem. All right, so these are some nursing diagnoses for patients who have uh, peripheral vascular disease. And then these would be some nursing diagnoses for those who have uh, venous insufficiency. Overall, our goals are to promote wound healing, manage the pain, uh, promote tissue perfusion, and um, optimize activity tolerance. So like I said, they really encourage them to walk. Uh, and to the point that they have pain and then sit down and rest and as soon as the pain is gone, get up and walk again. And that does actually help build their collateral circulation, uh, which can then sometimes take over and bypass wherever the blockage is. Alright, so for promoting tissue perfusion. Uh, <coughs> position with their extremities in a dependent position. Um, discuss regular exercise. Support extremities with foot cradles. Um, and encourage frequent position changes. Assessing pain every four hours um, under the managed pain diagnosis, keeping the extremities warm, um, and teaching patients uh, different strategies to help relieve uh, discomfort. Skin integrity, uh, very meticulous skin care, um, and knowing the difference between a stasis ulcer and a decubitus, because um, sometimes they can look very similar to each other, but a lot of times your stasis ulcers do not occur over those over bony prominences. Um, egg crate mattress. Um, and, you know, and a lot of our hospitals now have very specialized air mattresses to help um, promote skin uh, integrity. Activity. So assist where the care is needed, but encourage them to do as much activity as they possibly can. Um, provide activities that will take their mind off the pain and discomfort. Um, and then encourage very frequent uh, position changes. And then evaluation. Um, they said if every, we've done what we were supposed to do, um, then they are able to verbalize what appropriate wound care is. Um, they verbalize when they should call their provider. Um, they're abstaining from tobacco products um, and then they have better perfusion to their extremities. And that's it for peripheral vascular disease. Um, so just uh, remember this test coming up, you have oxygenation as well as perfusion. Um, there's a lot of material. Um, I know it only seems like it was just two classes, but there's a lot of material within these two classes. Um, so make sure that you, um, one, hopefully watch this video, um, and then two, that you're uh, going back through looking at your notes. And um, you know, the, the school will be open all week next week, as, as with the library. Um, so if you do not have the textbook, I encourage you to go by the library and spend some time in the book um, reading back over this material. All right, I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll see you in two weeks.